Yo, what is up guys? Oscar here with a new video. And I would like to welcome you all to the Prime Target playlist. Um, this video will be on the um, Prime Target playlist. So, welcome to Prime Target. Um, as I stated before, this is going to be discussing any of the primetime games um, during the NFL weeks. And so, yeah. Um, you know, and once the NFL season is over... I will think of how I could expand this playlist. You guys let me know what I can do um, to discuss, um, you know, primetime things in the world of soccer or NFL football. So um, let's go ahead and let's get started. So yesterday, this week's um, video, we'll be discussing the Dallas Cowboys versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And first off, um, Dak Prescott, welcome back. You look good. Um, and this is me coming from, you know, coming from a Washington fan. I honestly think that if he can stay healthy, he is the better quarterback in the NFC East. Um, you know, take that as you will, Washington fans. You guys can come at me. But in my, that's my opinion that um, he is the better quarterback in the NFC East. So that's if he still stays healthy. So he looked good. The only thing that I have against um, what Dallas did yesterday, to be honest, Throwing nearly 60 times. Um, you know, you have Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott was non-existent. You know, he was in a play where it was like a screen pass. And Tampa just blew it up and Dallas had to settle for a field goal. So, um, that that is one thing that they have to balance it out more. They have to feed Zeke if, they're, if their attack is going to go through Zeke. Because... They're just doing what they did last year, just throwing it around at the beginning of the season. And they cannot have that. When they threw the football a lot, they had no success. You know, they didn't win any games. They were 1-3 before um, Dak got hurt. So they have to find a way to, um, you know, balance this out. I, don't, I honestly don't think that Dallas fans want to see Dak Prescott throwing it 60 times a game and then Dallas coming up short. So, um, yeah, uh, Amari Cooper had, you know, big catches. I think he had like what two touchdowns. I think, um, CD lamb had big catches, um, yesterday as well. Cedric will, uh, Cedric Wilson stepped in, you know, very nicely for, um, Amari, not Amari Cooper, um, uh, Michael Gallup who I think is just Dallas needs to find another weapon, another another number two wide receiver. He's He is not it. He's either injury prone, has hands like a snake. Um, he, He's good. You know, he'll have his good games, but when he, he is not clutch, he's not. So, um, let's, you know, that's, I'll, I'll give my praises to Dallas where it's due. They, they fought hard. I honestly thought, and a lot of people thought that Tampa would run away with this game, which is not the truth. It's, it's, it's not true. They they didn't. Um, and here's the thing. Um, Tampa has the front seven. They they have the, the front seven, but their secondary is garbage. They, 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 their secondary, and yesterday Dallas proved it. They were able to throw, and, th and that's why I think Prescott was able to throw it nearly 60 times. He threw it a total of 58 um, you know, you know, they, you know, don't give me, oh, injuries. They're, they're, they suck. They're, no, they sucked last year with their secondary, you know. Um, Aaron Rodgers was able to throw on that secondary. Um, Patrick Mahomes, if he was able to get his ball, the ball out of his hands fast enough last year in that Super Bowl, I guarantee you that. And if Travis Kelsey or Tyree Kill wouldn't have dropped passes, I guarantee you, um, you know, um, Tampa would have given up more points. So, you know, don't give me. I'm I'm sick and tired of people hearing. You know, saying, "Oh, Tampa Bay can go 17 and no, they're not. They're not. Their secondary is trash. I believe." They suffered, you know, they had injuries going into the game. They were, they got more injuries yesterday. So, I, I, 
that that is the one weak point. Every team has a weak point. Tampa Bay is it's their secondary. Their the cornerbacks suck. Their their safeties suck. You know they um so it is what it is. You know that is the one thing that Tampa Bay is gonna have to contend with. Another thing, really, Dallas should have won this game. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Dallas really should should have won this game, but because it's Tom Brady who needs to whine and complain, he needs to always get his way, and because they're to the Dallas Cowboys, um, they they lose. They lose. Um, there was a pass interference call. Chris Godwin shouldn't have caught that ball. They, sh- you know, pass interference should have been called. You know, Tara McCauley, the um, rules analyst, <laughs> excuse me, getting burps and hiccups. Um, Terry McCauley said that it should have been a pass interference call, but because they're the Dallas Cowboys and because Tampa, um, Tom Brady is a part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers organization as their quarterback, um, they didn't call it. So, um, you know, what? what's the saying? What can go wrong will go wrong. Um, you know, so um, let me see what other uh, notes and nuggets that I get from yesterday's game. Um, oh, Greg Zerline. My God. Man, oh, man. Greg Zerline. He, I look, I understand he had back, he's had a back injury. He's had back surgery. But Dallas, you did the most Dallas thing. You guys put too much, you know, you guys are too confident. And you guys let him go out there. And he misses, what, two field goals. And here's the thing. I think that one of the field goals were a chip shot from, like, what, 30, 25, 30 yards? Okay. He misses that. And then he misses an extra point. So, Greg Zerline, I think that, you know, Dallas should should reconsider bringing someone into the practice squad. Because here's the thing. Washington? Washington? They, um, you know... They did it because of COVID reasons, but I think that there's another reason. That if Dustin Hopkins does not work out, then Eddie Pinero can come in and and do something. But, um, man, uh, Dallas, the, their kicker situation just uh, amazes me. Again, he missed two kicks, and he missed an extra point. And then he missed, um, one of the kicks he missed was a 61-yard field goal. I don't know why... Um, what's his name? Uh, McCar- uh Mike McCarthy decided to go f- to to kick that sixty-one yard field goal when his kicker was already struggling. When Greg Zerling was already struggling, so I'm rolling my eyes at that. So the coaching, eh, was meh for Dallas. It, it was meh. They again, their pass game was fine. Their run game was non-existent, which cannot happen. Um. Why would they go for a 61-yard field goal when their kicker was struggling? Uh, when they were down five and they could have gotten a touchdown, I guarantee you that if they would have th- gone for it on fourth and goal and would have thrown it um, to Amari Cooper or Blake Jarwin or someone like that, I guarantee you it would have been a touchdown, but instead they go for a field goal to make it 21-19. So Mike McCarthy's got to get better at you know being gutsy as well. So... Um, that's it. That's all. Um, let me know what you guys think of the Dallas game, to be honest. Um, you know, like I said, uh, on, you know, on the outside looking in, uh, as a football fan, um, you know, Dak Prescott, welcome back. He looked good on the Washington football team or NFC East side. I'm scared of Dak Prescott. I th- I honestly think Dak Prescott's better, the better quarterback in this division. Um, they just got to get certain things straightened out. Um, which who knows if they will because they're the Dallas Cowboys and they have an owner who you know is too cocky and too confident and arrogant for his own good. But we'll have to wait and see. But alrighty, guys, that's it for this video. Until then, guys, keep it real. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.